If you've ever watched a city council meeting, you may have noticed a woman sitting at the dais who isn't a council member and she isn't the city manager. So who is she? She's a city attorney and she plays a vital behind the scenes role in making sure that everything the city does is legal, transparent, and by the book. In other words, she keeps us straight and is one of the most important figures in city government. Welcome to City Life. I'm Beverly Thompson. Joining me to talk about the role of the city attorney's office is city attorney Kim Rayberg. Kim, thank you so much for joining me. We're so happy to have you. Thank you for the invitation, Beverly. It's good to be here. Thank you. So let's just get started with the million dollar question right out of the gate. What does your office do? Oh, wow. <laughs> I might say, what don't we do uh -huh. in some ways? The city attorney's office is a full service in-house legal department for mm -hmm. the city of Durham, which is a municipal corporation. Uh -huh. So we provide legal services to meet the needs of the city in a variety of different ways, mm -hmm. right? When you think about the work that attorneys do, um, oftentimes it's specialized by practice, mm -hmm. right? So you might take a bankruptcy attorney who does bankruptcy work for mm -hmm. numbers of different clients. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, the city attorney's office has one client, just a town or city, uh -huh. and we do all of the different things that, mm -hmm. they, that that town or city might need mm -hmm. from a legal perspective. Mm -hmm. So we do contract review, uh -huh. we do preparation of resolutions and ordinances mm -hmm. and codes, and um, we do real estate documents, uh -huh. we handle litigation. So we do a lot of different things. Just a broad array of uh, specialties Correct. that you handle for one corporation, that's a city, right? That's right. And that makes us different from a business or anything else? Sure, yeah, sure. I mean, uh -huh. businesses and governmental entities are very different, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. Businesses um, are entities that are profit driven. Mm -hmm. Generally, they are serving shareholders or mm -hmm. partners, mm -hmm. and the impetus behind them is to be profitable. Mm -hmm. By contrast, the a city, a municipality, or a county um, exists to provide services, mm -hmm. typically within a geographic location. Uh -huh. Right. So mm -hmm. we are not profit driven, mm -hmm. and we're we're defined very differently. Businesses pretty much have the authority to do whatever they like. That's why we call it free enterprise, mm -hmm, right? So mm -hmm. long as they are complying with generalized laws, uh -huh. um, they can do, they can be whatever kind of business they want to be. Uh -huh. By contrast, in a state like North Carolina, a city only has the authority to do what the state says it can do. Okay. All right. So let's just be crystal clear about this. I think a lot of people get confused about who you actually represent. And you just made it clear you represent the city. But what does your office not do? So the city attorney's office does not provide legal representation for individuals, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Our We have one client, the city of Durham. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we are representing the various employees or officers that do the work mm -hmm. of the city, but we don't provide legal advice or legal counsel to private individuals mm -hmm. or even to city employees when they're acting in their private capacity. Uh huh. So if I go out and have an accident and I need you to defend me, you don't do that, right? <laughs> that is not something we can do. Okay. We might give you a referral, but okay. that's about it. <laughs> okay. So, well, who actually hires you? Who is your direct boss? So my direct boss is the city council. Mm -hmm. And they um, hire you? That's correct. The members of the city council are are charged by state law to have an attorney. Every mm -hmm. municipal government in the state has to designate an attorney. Uh -huh. And um, so they appoint, we are appointed mm -hmm. officials. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, in many small towns, you might see the city attorney and it's, it's a private practitioner, right? I was gonna ask you about that. Right, mm -hmm. yeah, so it's someone who owns a law firm mm -hmm. nearby or in that town mm -hmm. who provides legal services to the city on a contract basis. Mm -hmm. But in most of the larger municipal governments mm -hmm. and the counties, in North Carolina, you'll have an in-house person, someone mm -hmm. who is actually an agent of the city, is an employee of the city, okay. and I'm appointed by mm -hmm. the council. Okay, so why is it that the work that you do and the way that you do it is so important for how the city actually functions? And you can give me an example. 
Right. It, it, well, the legal arm of a municipality uh -huh. works in partnership with virtually everything that the city does. Okay. Right? And so the work that cities do across the board is important work, mm -hmm. providing clean water, mm -hmm. right? We're sitting here in a studio in the water management facility. Right. I mean, the work that water management does is critically important. Mm -hmm. There's an attorney in my office who works hand in hand with them on virtually everything they do, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's building a new water reclamation facility, mm -hmm. whether it's working on easements that water management needs mm -hmm. to get water to and from, various areas of the city, there's an attorney who reviews those documents, uh -huh. um, who tells them whether they're acting within their authority, mm -hmm. um, who is looking and that's out. the authority granted by the state. Correct, okay. correct. Right. Who, t who makes sure that mm -hmm. the department is acting within the laws uh -huh. that govern it. Um, and that's true for every single administrative unit in mm -hmm. the city, right? Each department has an attorney that's working closely with them. So mm -hmm. we, we make sure that the city acts lawfully uh -huh. and within its authority. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we also do is we protect the public fisc, right? The resources of the taxpayers. Uh -huh. Your, people's tax dollars mm -hmm. pay for the activities of the city. Uh -huh. And the attorneys carefully monitor activity to make sure that we don't lose those funds uh -huh. to liability, mm -hmm. like from lawsuits, mm -hmm. right? right. Um, we also make sure that um, we are negotiating good terms within contracts mm -hmm. that are favorable to the cities and mm -hmm. thus favorable to the taxpayers. Uh -huh. So, you know, much of the work that we do is protecting the public safety, health, welfare, money uh -huh. um, to make sure that the residents and citizens of Durham get the community that they're mm -hmm. paying for. Mm -hmm. So then, generally speaking, uh, you must have a bevy of lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had a bevy. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> of lawyers who actually represent all these different areas of the city. I mean, who are the other lawyers? I mean, you don't have to name them, but what other areas do they cover, for example? Sure, right. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just going to give you an overview of our staff. Okay. That will, there are 13 mm -hmm. of us mm -hmm. in the city attorney's office. It's a bevy. Kind of bevy. <laughs> it's a small bevy. Small bevy. Um, and in addition to me, there is a senior deputy city attorney. Okay. And uh, oftentimes residents might see him sitting with the council when I'm not at a council meeting. Mm -hmm. um, there is a deputy city attorney. And those two individuals make up the leadership in, in our office, uh -huh. along with myself. Okay. So the three of us mm -hmm. manage other attorneys in the mm -hmm. office. We help facilitate and mentor um, other professionals in the office. Mm -hmm. And we make decisions about how we want to run the uh -huh. legal department. Uh -huh. There are also five senior assistant city attorneys. Mm -hmm. um, and they're considered senior because they have either attained or come to the city of Durham with really significant municipal law experience. Uh -huh. um, they can kind of hit the ground running. Mm -hmm. They know what the city is about. Mm -hmm. And then there are two assistant city attorneys who are a little earlier in the career, but who are making their way towards that senior status as well. Uh -huh. We have two paralegals and an office administrator. Uh -huh. And they're fantastic. And so the attorneys are somewhat divided up into little portfolios. We call them portfolios. Uh -huh. um, some attorneys' portfolios are departments designations, uh -huh. right? So, for instance, I mentioned my senior deputy city attorney. He has very clearly defined departmental clients. So uh -huh. he serves as a general counsel for the city county planning department, mm -hmm. for water management, mm -hmm. for public works, okay. and also for the department of inspections. Uh -huh. And then other attorneys have portfolios that span across departments. And okay. So because they're specialists mm -hmm. in what they do. A mm -hmm. good example of that is the deputy city attorney who leads a contracts and real property group mm -hmm. within the office of the city attorney. Mm -hmm. And so he does really complex construction contracts and very detailed contracts across department. Okay. He also handles eminent domain. Uh -huh. So any number of departments within the, within the city might mm -hmm. want to bring an eminent domain action. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. So he would be the specialist that the departments would go to to Correct. Handling yeah, working primarily in that instance of eminent domain with uh -huh. general services, mm -hmm. but it might be water management that needs property. It might be public works that needs property. Uh -huh. It kind of varies. It might be fire for a new fire station. Yeah. yeah. So. Sure. So what about public records? I mean, that's definitely across the organization. It is. And I mean, how do you decide 
which attorney would be the specialist for that? So each attorney works with their client departments okay. on public records uh -huh. requests generally. And I know mm -hmm. my office and your office right. work uh -huh. very closely uh -huh. on those matters. But uh -huh. yeah, if there are questions from the client department, let's mm -hmm. say Neighborhood Improvement Services, uh -huh. NIS, has a question about whether something is a public record or not, yeah. whether they can release it or not, mm -hmm. they would consult their attorney mm -hmm. to ask that question. Okay. and work through those issues. Maybe oh. have the records reviewed by mm -hmm. the attorney to make sure it's it's clear okay. to release it. All right. Uh, well, I know this can be confusing for a lot of people. And I, I can't say that I clearly understood the difference when I started working for the city just a few, 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 few years ago. <laughs> right? <laughs> Many years ago, actually. <laughs> what is the difference between the city attorney's office and the Durham district attorney's office? Oh, wow, that is a great question. Mm -hmm. And you're right, th there is a lot of confusion yeah. about that. Mm -hmm. So within the state of North Carolina, and, and I'm gonna make it state specific because this is not true across the country. Some oh. states do it differently. Uh -huh. But let's look at North Carolina. Okay. Within our state, as I previously mentioned, city attorneys represent municipal corporations. Uh -huh. We are civil lawyers, so we only do civil law. Civil mm -hmm. law is lawsuits, contracts not in litigation, uh -huh. things that are being done transactionally for legal purposes, but that are not disputes that are heard by courts, Okay. right? Uh -huh. um, and we only have one client, as I previously mentioned, mm -hmm. just the city. So mm -hmm. we're doing civil work for the city. Mm -hmm. A district attorney, on the other hand, in our state is a prosecutor. So it's a criminal attorney um, the state of North Carolina has 43 prosecutorial districts. Uh -huh. So for instance, Durham comprises one prosecutorial district, mm -hmm. District 16, mm -hmm. and that attorney is charged with enforcing state criminal law. Okay. So mm -hmm. the district attorney handles all criminal matters and juvenile matters as well mm -hmm. before the superior and district court divisions in our state. Mm -hmm. They are constitutionally elected officers, so mm -hmm. they are independent. They do not have anything to do with the city, and I know that is very confusing yeah. for people. Mm -hmm. Many years ago, I handled a lawsuit that was filed against the city and a number of different agents and departments, uh -huh. and they included the the district attorney in that lawsuit, it's, assuming that the city uh, had control over the district attorney or uh -huh. that the district attorney somehow worked in concert with the city, and that's not true, uh -huh. right? Okay. So a district attorney is an independent, constitutionally elected officer mm -hmm. who only handles criminal matters. Mm -hmm. It gets a little confusing because they do work with local law enforcement. Yeah, I was right? going to say that. Work On closely. investigation right. and enforcement of mm -hmm. criminal law mm -hmm. and trying those actions. Mm -hmm. But that is just a partnership. It's not an official connection gotcha. of any sort. So okay. the district attorney does not control local law enforcement and local mm -hmm. law enforcement doesn't really answer to the district attorney. They just work in concert uh -huh. on a process. Uh -huh. Would you ever have a relationship or any, any kind of interaction with the district attorney's office? Oh, sure. Sure we do, uh -huh. of course. Uh -huh. um, typically on records issues. Mm -hmm. um, on a personal level, I've had interaction with the district attorney, who mm -hmm. was the current district attorney, was a law school classmate of mine, and oh. we've mm -hmm. done you know talks together, panels together, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But from a business standpoint, usually we are just interfacing about the Durham Police Department. Okay, all right. So let me ask you then, if a complaint or anything like that is uh, made about anyone working for or representing the city, how do you handle that? I and mean, do you handle complaints against the city? Sure, so it, it kind of depends on the nature of the complaint, mm -hmm. right? So if we are dealing with a formal complaint, mm -hmm. a, a lawsuit filing, for instance, uh -huh. or a notice of a legal claim, mm -hmm. um, the city attorney's office working in conjunction with the risk management division, which mm -hmm. is a component of the city's finance department, uh -huh. we do handle those complaints, okay. right? We get a lawsuit in, mm -hmm. we start, you know, we hit the ground running in the litigation process. We make sure that the city or city employees have been properly served, and we represent them in their official capacities. We represent the city. Mm -hmm. We respond to the lawsuit. Mm -hmm. In the case of something that's just a formal claim of, uh -huh. you know, you owe us money because you wrecked our car, right? Mm -hmm. 
um, that has gone to risk management. Risk management will work with the city's excess insurers or adjusters okay. to evaluate the claim to determine if the city wants to pay it without mm -hmm. engaging in litigation. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, we do handle those types of claims. If it's, if it's something that's a little less formal, like a complaint of behavior, right, uh -huh. about a, a city employee, uh -huh. for instance, uh -huh. kind of also depends on what the behavior is there uh -huh. as well. If it's, if it's an employment type of matter, you know, someone didn't like the way that they were treated uh -huh. by someone who is public facing, uh -huh. let's say, uh -huh. um, th that is handled through the city manager's administration and those channels, uh -huh. generally at the supervisory level, okay. right? We deal with complaints about employee behavior there. Uh -huh. If it is some sort of dispute, employment dispute, mm -hmm. the city's human resources department would mm -hmm. handle that as an employee relations matter. Mm -hmm. um, but could bring you in if needed. They do bring if us in, right. There is advice. also an attorney mm -hmm. who works closely with human resources uh -huh. and can help them evaluate those things. Mm -hmm. um, they are, HR obviously has professionals who are trained investigators for that purpose, but sometimes there's a legal dimension that they, mm -hmm. they want to get some input mm -hmm. from the city attorney's office mm -hmm. on as well. Uh -huh. And then if it's not a city employee, let's say it's an elected official, mm -hmm. um, generally the city council is a self-policing, if that makes sense, self-policing body. Mm -hmm. um, they are supposed to keep one another in check. Uh -huh. So if someone presents, let's say, an ethics complaint against the city council or something that might have some criminal dimensions to it, mm -hmm. based on city council procedures and what's in our charter, mm -hmm. our city charter, if it comes to me, my responsibility is to report it to the city council. Okay. And then they are to collectively decide what they wanna do with mm -hmm. that information, with that complaint. Uh -huh. If it's something that's more clearly, seriously criminal, mm -hmm. we might refer it to law enforcement, mm -hmm. for instance. Mm -hmm. But you can see the tension that might have arise, yeah, yeah. right, with mm -hmm. the Durham Police Department being the law enforcement agency yeah. that's tasked with investigating such a thing. Mm -hmm. So it might be a more feasible situation to report it to someone like the Durham County Sheriff's Department mm -hmm. or the district attorney mm -hmm. to take it up then. And you don't represent the council members individually? I do not. For their no. business purposes. I do not, not mm -hmm. for that purpose, no. I mean. Mm -hmm. I re again, I represent the city as a corporate entity, as a uh -huh. municipal corporation, uh -huh. and the council members have to act collectively uh -huh. to dictate the actions and decisions of the city itself. Mm -hmm. So any individual council member who runs into something, um, generally that's going to be a personal matter. Gotcha, gotcha. So let me just ask you this. Um, you and I have known each other for a while. A very long time. A okay. <laughs> <laughs> few, few, few years. few years. <laughs> <Okay>. Too many. <laughs> Good so, ones. Yeah. So I know your background, mm -hmm. okay? And I know you are a graduate of a law school that is prestigious. And there is no doubt that you could be somewhere else making a whole lot more money. Why are you so <laughs> dedicated to the city? Oh. Yeah, Beverly, you're taking me back. It's been uh, almost 30 years since I graduated from law school. Uh -huh. Duke, Duke Law School was what brought me to Durham. Uh -huh. You know, there are so many reasons why um, you seek a certain career path uh -huh. in any career, but especially in the law. Uh -huh. um, you are right. Uh, big law opportunities were something that was focused on when I was a law student. Yeah. And, you know, when I look at big law associate salaries now as a first year, they first year associates with their bonuses make more than I do here. Right. <laughs> that is true. Uh -huh. um, but money's not the only reason to pursue a particular career path, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, there's so much fulfillment and satisfaction to be had in career as well. Uh -huh. uh, I will say I was somewhat wired to seek public types of opportunities. Wow. My dad was a career military person. He mm -hmm. did more than 30 years in the U.S. Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. My mom was also a public sector nonprofit type of person. So uh -huh. she is was a career nurse uh -huh. and worked for many years in our county hospital down in Onslow County and taught in the community college system in North Carolina, taught nursing. And so my parents were great role models of people who built and had very satisfying and rewarding careers. It, not making you know tons of money, not, mm -hmm. not tonning it in the private sector. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of balance to be had too in public sector opportunities. I mean, one of the things, I, I speak to 
law students a lot. We have a really thriving intern and extern program in the city attorney's office. Mm -hmm. I'm also invited quite a bit to speak to students at Duke and at NCCU and, and other uh, law schools. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I was looking for coming out of law school mm -hmm. was work-life balance. I know that's such a cliche and overused phrase, but uh -huh. really in the early 90s when I was coming out mm -hmm. and I had already started a family at the time, so I had a child, uh -huh. I was looking for meaningful work mm -hmm. that would allow me to see my family uh -huh. and not have to work the 60 plus hours a week yeah. that it would take to bill 1800 hours right. a year at the time, right? right? Uh -huh. So um, I was looking for that. I was also looking for work that was deeply meaningful, mm -hmm. right? There's something to be said. I mean, I think all of us in the city attorney's office w would tell you that it's a great point of pride and joy and meaning to be able to walk around the city of Durham and see things that we know our office worked with other city employees on mm -hmm. to make happen, mm -hmm. right? Durham Performing Arts Center, yeah. the Transit Center, mm -hmm. the Carolina Theater. I mean, all of these are, are city properties, we're city projects, mm -hmm. many of the parking decks downtown. Yeah. I mean, the attorneys mm -hmm. have worked hard on that and it's, it's really wonderful to be part of the community in that way, to be uh -huh. able to marry your work with the growth of the community. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of a lot of different things that led me to the city. I've been in the public sector for a long time, so mm -hmm. even coming right out of law school. Oh, okay. My first job was with the County Commissioners Association, okay. which is in Raleigh. Mm -hmm. It's an advocacy organization mm -hmm. for the 100 counties in the state, but mm -hmm. I really got a, a glimpse into the importance of local government and people's everyday lives. Mm -hmm. What we do really matters. Yeah, it, it does. really does uh, matter. That's a great, great explanation. I and mean, how do you persuade other uh, law students? Because I, I would imagine going into law school, you, you're thinking about coming out and making a lot of money sure. you know, at a firm. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah. we do a fair amount of outreach to mm -hmm. law students. Mm -hmm. Um, we call this the civil local government law sector, right, uh -huh. or the municipal law sector. Uh -huh. And we're very intent on making sure law students learn about us, that we're uh -huh. here, because a lot of times people don't know, uh -huh. you know, to the point of how we started this conversation, people mm -hmm. don't know we're here right. and what we do. Mm -hmm. um, and that's true of law students as well. Mm -hmm. So we do reach out to them quite a bit. And you have to be pragmatic, right? It, it, I understand that students these days, many of them are coming out with tremendous levels of student debt. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of times that means they have to go into the private sector, go with large law firms, mm -hmm. go with corporations mm -hmm. in order to make the type of income that they need to pay off those loans. Mm -hmm. But we remind them that we're always here. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the things we do tell them is, if you have an interest in working your way back around to local government law, mm -hmm here are practice areas that might be helpful oh. to you in making that entry in five years, in mm -hmm. 10 years, mm -hmm. whenever you may decide to make that switch. Mm -hmm. um, employment law is never a bad idea. Every employer, public, private, mm -hmm. doesn't matter, mm -hmm. needs people with that knowledge, mm -hmm. that expertise. Right. Um, environmental law mm -hmm. is a really hot topic, as you know. Mm -hmm. Land use law oh, yes. is huge, right? Huge. Has there been a bigger issue? for cities around the country, but especially in North Carolina right. with our rate of growth mm -hmm. in recent years in land use, there hasn't been. Like right. that's where it's at, exactly. you know? Um, and you know, I think they take that guidance mm -hmm. and the, those suggestions pretty well. Mm -hmm. And we do have students, former students who keep in touch with us. That's great. To reach back out to us, mm -hmm. you know, who were interns and externs and say, hey, I'm clerking for this judge or I'm at this law firm now, but mm -hmm. I'm hoping to kind of make my way into the government practice group, wow. you know, that sort of thing. So mm -hmm. we're pragmatic. We understand the challenges they face, mm -hmm. but we also know that we need the best and the brightest in this sector too. Gotcha. And we make mm -hmm. it as attractive as we can. Mm -hmm. I will say that these are great opportunities, right, within the legal field generally. It's uh -huh. kind of a I like to think it's a sweet spot. Uh -huh. um, it, compensation is not what it is in the private sector, but it's fair, you know, relative mm -hmm. to other public sector opportunities. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So, how do you prepare for the position that you in uh, that you are in now? I mean, you, you can't take courses for it. Is it just a matter of being at the right place at the right time to learn about 
something or I mean, you handle the Duke Law, uh, I'm sorry, the Duke um, Lacrosse. I did. Case. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that was a learning experience, I'm sure, for everybody. For all of us. Yes. <laughs> uh, how do you prepare for this? Yeah. Um, well, I'm, as the kids would say, a bit of an old head, right? <laughs> so it, ba <laughs> back when I graduated from law school, uh -huh. um, you're right. There wasn't a lot of classwork or curriculum yeah. or things, classes you could take to prepare yourself mm -hmm. for this type of thing. That's changed a lot. I will say in talking to students at UNC Chapel Hill Law School, mm -hmm. Duke Law School, North Carolina Central Law School, mm -hmm. they all have coursework now in state and local government or oh, in local good. government law, which is amazing to me yeah. and fascinating yeah. um, and really exciting. Like mm -hmm. I'm excited that they're getting exposed to what municipalities need mm -hmm. from lawyering, uh -huh. right? Um, so that landscape has changed a little bit. In terms of how I prepared, um, it, you know, you, you need the law degree if you want to be a city attorney, obviously, but you also have to have a pretty um, healthy interest in what local government does, uh -huh. right? You have to be curious. You have to want to learn. You mm -hmm. have to want to learn something new. None of us are masters of anything, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. We have some that are really, really good at what they do, uh -huh. particularly our land use specialists, uh -huh. right? Particularly our contract specialists. But when you come in the door, you're, you're a generalist uh -huh. and you're having to look at a lot of different areas of law because city operations are so broad. Yeah. And so the city attorney's office has to cover a lot of ground. Mm -hmm. So you have to love learning. You have to love learning about what government does. Mm -hmm. um, when I, as I mentioned earlier, I, I started on the county side. So I learned first about what county governments do. Mm -hmm. And then I worked for Durham County as well for a few years early in my career uh -huh. before I came to the city. Yep. And so, so you know. it didn't begin with the city. It okay. didn't. <laughs> no. And, and so it's been this constant quest of, uh -huh. you know, exploring what governmental entities do, what uh -huh. they need. Um, I used to do tax collections work and represented register of deeds and things like that. So, mm -hmm. um you have to constantly be building on that knowledge base uh -huh. and understand that no two days are ever the same. Mm -hmm. So if you're a creature of habit and a creature of routine, mm -hmm. you might struggle a little bit mm -hmm. in a municipal law office mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. literally it's different every day when you walk in. I believe it. I think <laughs> in the city, that's just commonplace. Absolutely. Nothing is ever the same. I think all city employees right. know that, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So Kim, you're first, the first black city attorney for the city of Durham. Female. Female. No, my predecessor city. was a black uh, yeah, that's attorney right, as well. That's right, yeah. I meant female. But how has it um, been for you? I mean, is it just like you thought it would be? And is it uh, walking the, you know, <laughs> is it easy? Um, you know, Beverly, I honestly don't, I don't think know if that's a fair question. about <laughs> my, I, I don't think every day about my identity, I will uh -huh, say. Uh -huh. um, I. I think Durham is such a special city in that way. Mm -hmm. The city clearly valued and was striving for diverse environments and diverse workplaces mm -hmm. well before I arrived uh -huh. in the workplace. Mm -hmm. That's not true of every city, right? I, I get that. There are some cities where being the first black female would feel a little lonelier. Yeah. But you know, look at yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're a department director. The city manager is a black woman. Mm -hmm. There's a deputy city manager who's a black woman. So, mm -hmm. so I'm in such great company mm -hmm. in this particular city, and I have been throughout my career. Uh -huh. I will say. Uh -huh. So when I when I came to the city attorney's office in 2005, um, there was one other black attorney in the office mm -hmm. at the time. Um, I was the first. I was the only black female at that time. There had been black women attorneys in the office who preceded me, uh -huh. which is really notable because mm -hmm. that can't be said of, of many of the larger in-house offices in the state, right. Right? right? Like Durham was kind of getting out ahead of that game mm -hmm. early mm -hmm. and creating opportunities and, and workspaces that were yeah. diverse and mm -hmm. brought a number of different life experiences to them. Mm -hmm. um, but as I've grown in this office, I mean, the level of different life experiences that has been added to our team uh -huh. is just incredible, right? So 
I mentioned there are 13 of us. Uh -huh. um, of those 13, eight are women, five are men. Um, that, the, that wouldn't have happened 20, 30 years no, ago at all. Right? Not at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if I look at, at the attorneys, I mean, three are black attorneys, mm -hmm. three are Hispanic, mm -hmm. and four are white. Wow. Um, Very diverse. We have two immigrants on our team. One of the paralegals immigrated to this country from Cameroon, mm -hmm. and one of the attor attorneys immigrated as a child from Honduras. Wow. So, I mean, we're just yeah. a really, I, I feel like the office has for a long time been moving towards being reflective of Durham mm -hmm. at large mm -hmm. and very reflective of Durham's values, but we're definitely there now. Good. Like, it's just an amazing group of people. Impressive. Because they come with all of those attributes, but they're also brilliant. Uh -huh. They're and so good at what they do. Uh -huh. Like. I love to tell everybody how I have the best team in the in the state, hands down. Well, we can vouch for that at the city, for sure. <laughs> do you feel a special sense of responsibility, though? I do. Yeah, I mean, I was taught by my parents, you know, always leave it better than you found it. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and so, and, and, and I will say, my predecessor was an amazing city attorney. I, mm -hmm. I worked for him for more than a decade. Mm -hmm loved working for him, and then his predecessor, the attorney who hired me, uh -huh. um, has been an incredible mentor my entire career. In uh -huh. fact, I just saw him earlier this year because I was up at a conference in D.C., and he oh, now lives yeah. in the D.C. area, uh -huh. and I reached out to him, and it, it meant so much just to be in his company, to kind of share war st stories, <laughs> you know, and, and so I, I think I, I have taken all of the care and mentorship that has been provided to me by those special people, mm -hmm. and, and I'm really just trying to push it out the door on, you. on, you know, on the people who are in the office. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got an incredible group of youngsters. I love to tell this story. So, okay. five years ago, um, back before I was appointed city attorney, just mm -hmm. before, I was literally the youngest person on the team. Twelve people on the team at the time. Uh -huh and I was the youngest person, I was 48 years old, right? So where everybody else was kind of feeling this, this influence of incoming millennials yeah. and all this, we had yeah. none of that. <laughs> okay. We had none of that. We kind of had senior yeah, status. Just you were gonna say you were about, what, 25, No, 26, I was 48. You know, and, and I remember thinking, oh, we got, we got to create like inroads. Yeah. Be careful what you wish for, right? right? So then we, we had a number of retirements and departures and, yeah. and things like this, and now we have you know, a number of millennials in the office, one who's almost on the cusp of a Gen Z or, you know, just a baby millennial. And, <laughs> and it's been wonderful to kind of see those new ideas, the uh -huh. new skill sets. Uh -huh. I mean, everybody knows this, but their technology skills, because mm -hmm. they are native, uh -huh. they were oh. born into, yes. the, it's just Came incredible, out of the womb. incredible yeah. right? <laughs> right. <laughs> incredible. And so I, I feel, um, the obligation to kind of keep those people in the fold. They're very talented. One of the challenges that we do have is more mobility in our workforce. Mm -hmm. I think everybody within the city is feeling that. Uh -huh. um, one of the hallmarks of the city attorney has, office has been tremendous longevity. Mm -hmm. So kind of getting buy-in from this new generation of employees, it's not been wired to go somewhere and, and work for 30 years right. and get the watch and, you know, right. they, they're not told to do that and mm -hmm. their peers are not doing that, mm -hmm. but to get buy-in from them, yeah. to kind of really make a commitment mm -hmm. and to keep their skills and their talent with yeah. us, it's a challenge, challenge and I'm working on it, mm -hmm. um, but, I, but I have great <laughs> visions for them. All right, yeah. sounds good. Yeah. In fact, I think you could pass that along to other department directors. I mean, it is a challenge it uh, is. to bring people here and have them stay. I mean, that's just, uh, you know, different from how it has been in the past. I mean, the yeah. organization used to sell itself, right? right? The mm -hmm. stability, the safety, mm -hmm. the benefits we right. all love to talk about. Exactly. But now we really need to build culture yeah. that keeps people in the fold. Yeah. And that's something I work on. And um, I love being the first of what I am, but there are people in that office who will be another different first. Uh -huh. And I can't wait to, to contribute to making that happen. Uh -huh. So if people want to find out more about the city attorney's office, how do they do that? Sure. Um, they can go to dermancy.gov. Okay. <laughs> we, are, we are listed right along with all the other departments and offices. Uh -huh. um, the city attorney's office does have a page. Uh -huh. And they can visit our page. They Wonderful. can see what we're about, what uh -huh. we do, why we do it. Uh -huh. 
how we do it. There's okay. a staff directory they can consult, and they can also see the practice areas. Uh -huh. Those portfolios that I previously mentioned mm -hmm. are available on our webpage, and Wonderful. they can call us. We, we do get a fair number of, of residents who reach out uh -huh. and ask questions. We don't provide private legal counsel, okay. but we do provide information. Uh -huh. I mean, that's one good purpose that we can serve mm -hmm. to the public at large mm -hmm. is helping them understand how their government works and why. Gotcha. Anything else you'd like to add? This has been delightful. Oh, thank you so much for the invitation. Um, I don't think so. I, I just, you know, know that we're there. If they need to access us, we're on second floor. And, um, I just really appreciate the platform to tell you a little bit more about what Municipal Law Office does. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Bev. All right. Take, Take care. care. Okay. Well, that does it for City Life. Don't forget to follow us on social media, watch us on Durham Television Network and on YouTube, and you can listen to our podcast on iTunes. I'm Beverly Thompson. Thank you for joining me to learn more about City Life in Durham. I have a question. I wish I had asked earlier. <laughs> we see you sitting on the desk yes. every meeting. Yes. And what do you, I'm sure everybody would be curious to know what exactly you're doing there um, in terms of working with the, the city council members and the mayor. We'll see you lean over and whisper something. <laughs> I mean, what is your role during the meetings? Sure. Um, generally, my role is to serve as a resource during the meeting. So oh. a lot of times people will see me drag a lot of stuff up onto the dais and uh -huh. I'm opening my laptop. So usually I have the city council procedures uh -huh. open mm -hmm. um, in case there's some sort of procedural question that comes up. Mm -hmm. um, I will also have a script. Our, my office prepares a script for the presiding officer, who oh. is typically the mayor. Uh -huh. And I follow along in that script, mm -hmm. just in case, because sometimes they have distractions during the meeting and right. they forget where they were. Mm -hmm. And, you know, okay. it's helpful to have the script on hand just in case they need a prompt. Mm -hmm. I am there for answers. Um, if they have a question about, I'm sure folks have noticed that them asking, you know, counselor, mm -hmm. do we need to make this motion or can we modify yeah. the motion in this way? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I know the answer to that and sometimes I don't. <laughs> that can be tough, can it? Because it, it, it can catch you, you it know, can catch off you the off cuff. Guard. Yeah. You, don't, you don't know what's going to come uh -huh. up. And so, you know, one of the one of the things that I do try to work with with council members is please send me your questions in advance and uh -huh. I will make sure that I am prepared to ask that question. Mm -hmm. Many of them are very helpful in that regard. They mm -hmm. do think to do that. Hey, I noticed this and this. I'm going to ask this. Just be aware. Uh -huh. um, but sometimes things do come up in meetings and they didn't anticipate having the question and, mm -hmm. and we just kind of have to roll with it. Mm -hmm. So I'm there as a resource. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there any other questions you guys would like to ask? So you mentioned eminent domain a couple of times. So what is that? I did. Explain to people what that is. Sure. So eminent domain is the process by which a governmental entity might claim private property in order to use it for a governmental purpose. And it does have to be a governmental purpose. So generally for us, I think most of our, and it's also called condemnation. Uh -huh. So eminent domain condemnation, most of our actions are for city right of way. So sidewalks, streets, roads. Um, sometimes it's for facilities. We might need a new firehouse. We mm -hmm. might need a, a water reclamation facility or a mm -hmm. water treatment plant. Mm -hmm. So eminent domain is the process by which the city acts as a plaintiff, files a lawsuit against a property owner mm. saying, we need some of your property. Now mm -hmm. what the city does do is tries to pay fair compensation for that property, uh -huh. right? So if, if the city is coming through and widening a road and they're taking six feet off of your front yard mm -hmm. because they need that for road surface, uh -huh. then they will deposit with the court an estimated value of that land. So mm -hmm. let's say it's $15,000 to take that six feet mm -hmm. and they'll deposit that with the court. And usually the dispute, the city has the right to take the property 
for a governmental purpose. And mm -hmm. there's been a lot of litigation about what is a governmental purpose, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but the dispute in an eminent domain action or a condemnation is typically over the value of the land that's mm -hmm. being taken. How do you keep up with all the issues confronting the city? you know, that might possibly come to you? Do you just wait for them to come to you? <laughs> or do you get a heads up? Um, no. I, I mean, there are many different ways. So the attorneys are really plugged in mm -hmm. to their client departments. Mm -hmm. And so if you're asking if how I personally keep up, yeah. I am reliant on them. Okay. For the most part. Uh -huh. um, and, and in my individual efforts to keep up, mm -hmm. I have helpful meetings with the city manager. Uh -huh. um, our, our leadership team will have periodic meetings with the city manager's leadership team mm -hmm. to kind of share things that are percolating. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of how I keep up, is, mm -hmm. is those interactions, those relationships, mm -hmm. those meetings, mm -hmm. just to get information. The city manager shares, as you know, her weekly report. Right. Um, well, the, I guess the departments are reporting to her. Right. It's mm -hmm. also distributed to us mm -hmm. so that we can kind of see what's going on in the departments. Mm -hmm. And then um, the attorneys, they, they just fill me in on, here's what my, my client is working on. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, community safety has been a very dynamic department oh, over yes. the last year. Mm -hmm. And one of the attorneys, Sophia, advises them. And so she comes to me often and uh -huh. says, community safety is going over to RTI and having a, a panel discussion and I'm going with them. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. so uh, yeah, they, uh -huh. they just advise me. Uh -huh. Great. One more question. Yeah. You talked about council procedures sure. and the procedures being their own procedures. Correct. Are you responsible for making sure that they comply with their own procedures? Uh, you did say they self-police, but I mean, this might be a sticky question, but. <laughs> it's, it's a little sticky. Uh -huh. um, I, I can suggest and encourage that they observe and comply uh -huh. with their own procedures, but as I indicated, they are self-governing, they're self-policing, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, and so they're supposed to keep one another on the track of complying with their own procedures. Mm -hmm. The City Council does have a procedures committee, uh -huh. um, and, and generally that procedures committee should, invite, should advise the entire council mm -hmm if they need procedural changes, if they need to observe things differently. That's really not my role. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, but it but it does um, create more predictability and probably better business practices if they do observe their procedures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Kim, thank you so much for joining me. I know how busy you are, but I, you, you're just a delight to have around. A, Great person to know, and I really appreciate it. Right back at you, Beverly. Okay. It's been wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. Let's wrap, guys.